A typical high-end film production generates several terabytes of data per day, either as footage from multiple cameras or as background information regarding the set. The EU project IMPART has been researching solutions that improve the integration and understanding of the quality of the multiple data sources, in order to both support creative decisions on set or near it, and enhance post-production as well. In order to test the integration of the technology developed within the project, the IMPART team met for two days on two different sets to record some test data. I'm now setting parameters for LiDAR scanner. This is a laser scan to get very accurate 3D geometry um, of them the capture site. Then it rotates automatically and then shoot radar beams to get them the accurate um, the distance from the sensor and then get also some photos to get colors and then finally we construct some series geometry of the scene. We're looking at uh, web rendering of the LiDAR scan, which was taken about an hour ago, half an hour ago. Uh, Hansung from Surrey University, University of Surrey, just uh, processed it and registered it, and then we dumped it into Point Cloud running on here. Now it's, you can see it's downloading um, more fine, high resolution data. And I think it's about two and a half million points. Okay, um, this is a Spherum camera. It's a um, kind of a um, spherical camera. It has a um, PCI lens on the top of the tripod and it rotates 360 degrees to scan the whole scene. So actually it covers 180 degrees vertically and 360 degrees horizontally. The raw data that we've used are the spherical images from the Spherum cameras which are the images that capture the scene around the camera, 360 degrees. We have five of those stereo scans and we feed them to automatic algorithm that uh, uh, merges them together from different position. And in the end, we have some kind of point clouds from those spherical cameras. And as you can see, I can add another scans from uh, different spherical cameras. So I took um, the reference still photos of the capture site with um, this um, mirrorless camera in the morning and then I got here around 20-30 uh, photos and then using this uh, photo recap tool I could reconstruct this kind of scene as a full 3D scene purely reconstructed from only photos using photos This point cloud is actually called bullets and the orange and red means uh, high precision and the violets mean low precision. I can actually see that the, the capture area is captured quite well along with some buildings and the bushes in the background are not captured so well. All these 3D reconstructions can be registered together in one 3D scene and shared via the web. Once the video from the cameras has been ingested, it can be added to the 3D unified scene and visualized. Annotations and metadata can be added in the scene. Once the video is dumped on the computers, it is analyzed by automatic algorithms. We have recorded today uh, some actions that usually come across a real video shooting. We have chosen some activities based on the past requirements. So we have tried to simulate uh, a real scene where we have multiple actions. The witness cameras uh, shoot all the time, we don't have uh, speeds, so the idea is that we will run our algorithms on site or after the shooting. Our algorithms can perform temporal video segmentation based on uh, visible human activities. Uh, the, each video segment can be annotated automatically by our developed algorithms and tools, uh, which perform uh, uh, human activity recognition, face clustering, and uh, short characterization. So, uh, we are doing some uh, action synchronization, which works on a low level and produces metadata for faster searching in the data because there are cases where you need a slower or faster shot so you can cut it near footage better and we produce this kind of metadata. And here we capture the shot which is slightly out of focus. 
it's not clearly apparent on the shot. So we developed a filter which actually visualizes the focus. And here we can see some sort of color coded viewfinder. We actually uh, output an XML with the metadata which we extracted from this shot. And in here we can see the sharpness of the shot plotted over time. So with this technology, uh, it's much easier for the reviewers to uh, see the shots after the day and to select the shots which are nicely focused and contain good data. Most of these new tools produce results on set, which saves a lot of time and money on the production and post-production stages. They made such an impact that they are already being used in Industrial Partners Double Negative Visual Effects and Filmlight Limited. All these huge amount of media and data generated is then passed onto the production stage. Filmlight Limited introduced Flux to the Double Negative team, a post-production server and management tool which provide a revolutionary new way to store, classify and browse assets. Double Negative Visual Effects is a company specialised in digital post-production, mainly of major feature films. The company fits perfectly in the scope of Impart Solutions. Filmlight Limited is an established market-leading innovator in the digital film, broadcast and commercials post-production industry. Filmlight's role in Impart is the development of browsing tools and system architectures for data management solutions. A normal film production generates thousands of files. It is impossible to annotate manually and navigate through all the assets without having sorted them. Flux Manager provides many solutions for data managing. Hi, so today we've had uh, Filmlight in, Wolfgang and uh, Ant have been over using Flux Manage on our production data here at Double Negative, pointing at two shows, Mission Impossible and Vista Terminator film. This has been a good test because uh, we've been using data uh, bespoke to the Impact project to date of a couple of tens of um, terabytes of information, but the production size data sizes are much more significant into the hundreds of terabytes. So, um, Wolfgang, uh, how useful has the uh, test been for you so far? It's been very useful. I would, would say it was entirely successful. There's still a lot of work for us to do to make that happen more smoothly, but it is um, obviously only through tests like that you find out where, where the real problems are. And um, as we've sort of seen, looking at the footage today from the Flux Manage, there's a lot of data that we have and a lot of it is quite clearly unsorted when it comes in from on set and uh, there's been a lot of challenges that we've been having to deal with, both the, the amount keeps going up show on show, the different types of data and that leads to a lot of manual processing and uh, a lot of frustration and as also duplication of data as we sort it. We need to verify that we don't you know, lose anything and there needs to be a relationship between files once they've been sorted and unsorted and uh, we would like to move away from that scenario. Um, Simon has been working on some of that with our own systems. Uh, how do you see uh, Flux Manage helping out with what you found so far? Yeah, it could prove quite useful. Um, it's able to read a massive folder with lots of heterogeneous data types. Most of what we have, what we get from set is probably images in, in various, from various sources, but also lots of video streams that um, come in in very different formats. So. But it's not just about the size of the data, it's about the number of files and it's about the type of files that we have. And in, in the specific case of Flux, it is very much structured around the idea that uh, you can have economies of scale by treating sequences as if they are essentially a single file with some extended properties. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is that uh, we can take the data, the metadata that we collect from what I assume is quite a typical modern, heavily um, 3D oriented production and uh, tune the system to fit into that environment. The whole point of the Flux architecture is that you can add your own metadata into the database and that can be 
things that can be scripted and automated to a large degree, or it can be plugins that actually extract metadata from the images themselves that have been developed by um, very much so. Uh, we found it very useful for our, you know, our own in-house software jigsaw as well, which uh, uh, we managed to extend as a result. Uh, but, uh, this is, I, mean, I think we're all in agreement, this is a, a key problem for the industry as a whole and uh, any tools that can make the data management easier, uh, more flexible and more automated uh, is a good thing. While there remains work to be done to take full advantage of the Flux Plus platform in a real production environment, the integration of a metadata-based workflow, at least for colour on set and in post, has progressed well. Phil Knight has been promoting this new workflow over the last 12 months in a wide range of events, demonstrations, workshops and showcases. The reactions to these events have been consistently positive and the early adopters are full of praise. In September 2015, the IMPART project organised two special paper sessions at the IEEE International Conference on Image Processing in Quebec City, Canada. This conference is the reference annual conference on image processing, with over 1,000 attendees from all over the world. Hi, I'm Alan Evans from uh, UPF, and uh, here we are at uh, the IEEE International Conference in Image Processing. It's quite a big deal for us to be here because IMPART has organised uh, two special sessions uh, within the conference. It's pretty much the biggest conference on image processing in the world. Uh, it happens every year, as you can see, it's quite a big venue here. We've just finished our special session now, the second of the two special sessions. It was quite a big success. Uh, it was really good. And uh, yes, we're really happy. Hello, I'd like to welcome you on this uh, special session. The University of Surrey and Double Negative presented a joint paper on the management of multimodal big data for film production. Universitat Pompeu Fabra presented a paper on the visualization of this data. The Aristotle University of Thessaloniki presented a technical paper on improved methods for k-means clustering. The Brno University of Technology published a paper on quality assurance in large collections of video sequences. The ICIP special sessions were a fantastic showcase for the academic work of the IMPACT project, demonstrating the quality of 